Well-meaning content creators are getting hit with mass copyright claims every day, and the vast majority of them are false claims. As terrible as that is, a question must be asked. What about the artist behind the music? Where's their cut? That's right, I'm going to be looking at this from both the music artist's point of view as well as the content creators, but don't click away just yet. Don't don't go away, don't go away. S since I'm both a music producer and a content creator on YouTube, I'd like a chance to shine some light on a problem that many of us see, but have a really hard time wrapping our minds around. First, let's talk reality. When we as people spend a lot of time on something that we're passionate about, first and foremost, we want to get our content out there for people to see. But as we continue our work, we realize that it can cost a lot of money to pursue our passion. So we begin the journey of figuring out a way for our passion to pay for itself. So both the music producer and the content creator would like some way to pay for their passion. YouTube seems to be the perfect place for content creators. The more our content gets seen, the more ads get seen, and we get a cut of that revenue. But what about the music producer? If we make music that's suitable for YouTube content, but not really music that's meant to be consumed on its own, how do we get our cut? The answer? We don't. I mean, not really. Most of us give our music out for free. Some have found a way to get a little cut from each download by using ads on a download page, but that doesn't really add up too much. Some of us do commissions, but those are few and far in between, at least for me. Contact me, please. I love making music for people. Ah. One seemingly reasonable way to monetize our creations would be to go through a distributor. I personally use DistroKid. One of the options I was given when submitting my music for distribution was Content ID. As a YouTuber myself, I dropped a heavy nope on that button. <laughs> I didn't want my music to be the cause of a content creator's ad revenue being cut from them, but many people click yes on that button as they feel, and rightfully so, that they deserve some kickback if their music is going to be used. Now this brings me to my big idea. If if my song is used on a video, yes, it would be nice to get a little bit of that ad revenue as, you know, I've put a lot of work into that song and I deserve some kickback from it. However, let's be reasonable. First, just because my two minute song got used in a video, I, I, I don't deserve all that ad revenue from that video. Not even half of that revenue should even go my way. My music can be used many times over, whereas that video content is often for just one video and that's it. So even to say that I should get a cut for the percentage of the video my song was playing for is a bit ridiculous because the content creator put in a bunch of work for the montage or time lapse or what have you that my song was used for. So my big idea is that YouTube should have a system so that music used in content does give the music artist some kickback, but it should be broken down in a much more reasonable way. As a content creator, I'd be fully willing to give up a reasonable amount of my ad revenue to the songwriter of a piece of music I used in my video. But only if it's reasonable. I, I believe that all parties involved would benefit greatly from a system that is reasonable. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. Y you know, the jumbo sized elephant or, or you know, like, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, let, let's just talk about what happened to Mumbo Jumbo. <laughs> if you're not fully aware of who Mumbo is, he's one of the larger Minecraft YouTubers out there. And just recently, close to half of his content was hit with copyright claims. This causes every bit of income he'd normally get to sit into a pool until that claim is resolved one way or the other. If it resolves in the favor of Mumbo, he'll get his revenue as usual, but if it resolves in favor of Warner Chapel, well, poor Mumbo Jumbo, he'll be up a tree. According to a tweet of Mumbo's, the issue is not that Proletter or his distribution company are claiming these, but rather another artist song which uses the same sample is producing these claims. This is where things get scary because Mumbo can prove that he has the right to use Proletter's music. However, if Proletter didn't have the rights to use that sample, Mumbo still may actually be up a tree. But if Proletter had the right to use the sample, then it will resolve in Mumbo's favor. <laughs> hey, uh, so editor FCD here, I wasn't quite right there. I, I, I messed that up a little bit. See, uh, basically what's going on here is that Proletter used a sample in his song and he had the rights to use that sample and publish based on the rights he was given in the song. But 
he was he didn't have the rights to allow anybody else to distribute it, which is essentially what Mumbo's doing by putting it in his videos. So they're getting Mumbo on a technicality. So as I said earlier, it sounds like Mumbo actually might be up a tree, but what he's going to have to do is he's just getting rid of the song that we all love, that we all know from Mumbo's uh, videos. And that's that then. Hey, but anyways, back to the video. <laughs> The part that upsets me, though, is that Warner Chapel will have no consequences for this false negative, and so they'll just keep on doing this without taking any time to check if their claims are founded. This opens up the opportunity for them to just keep doing this, using automation even, with hopes that at least one out of ten creators won't dispute the claim, essentially giving them free money. Anyway, I would love to hear your opinions on this topic. Do, I mean, do you feel it's right for music artists to want kickback? Do you think YouTube should make changes to their policies? And what what sort of changes would you like to see in the music industry as a whole? I, I, I All these questions, I would love to have a conversation down in the comments below. I'll be keeping an eye on it all day today, and I hope to see you guys down there because this is a big conversation, a huge issue in this day and age, and I feel it's super, super important for us to talk about these things. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this quick episode. It's the first time I ever did a, you know, FCD Explains video. If you like this format, I have some other ideas I've been wanting to do in this format. Huge thanks to Resen Knight who made all the character animations. And yeah, anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Toodles!